All right, first we need to go into Microsoft Excel and we're going to enter in your image. To enter in your image, you're going to go to the drop down menus, select format, sheet, and background. From there, you're going to select the location where you stored your image and then select your image and say click, click insert. That's going to put the image in the background. You'll need to resize the columns. First thing you're going to do is go ahead and click the little box that is up there between the A and the 1. This should select the whole sheet. Uh, from the pull down menus, then click format, column, width, and set the width to 1.5. And what that's going to do is going to make all the columns a little more narrow. You're then going to need to resize column A. You do that, go ahead and select column A by left clicking the A, and then click the little space between the A and the B, and pull that so it aligns with the left side of the map. Now go ahead and select the column that is just right of the map, right click it, and then right click that letter, and then right click the column and say column width, and adjust that to the size of four. In the top three columns, no, actually no, row numbers two, three, and four, enter the numbers one, two, and three. Highlight those three columns and then click the little box in the bottom right hand corner of the area and drag that all the way down to the bottom of your map. And what that will do is it'll auto automatically sequence those numbers one through 33 or however many rows you have. Next, you're going to resize the next row, adjust that so it goes all the way to the right side of the screen without going off the screen. Go ahead and enter the um, points of interest in that top area. Now you need to resize the rows, so we'll go ahead and select all again by clicking that little button up there between the A and the 1. Go to the pull down menus, do the same thing. Um, and resize it, drop down menu, click format, row height, set the height to 12. If 12 doesn't work, you can adjust it a little bit. Then go to the bottom one where just beneath the map, left click the uh, row number, click and hold the line between the one you select and the one right beneath it, drag and release it until it, it extends to the university through the university's name. Now you need to insert a comment. So find a point of interest on your map, right click that space, a pull down menu will appear, select insert comment and type the relevant information. Um, you're going to have to do the research on what, what is interesting about this point before you get to this point um, th and then you're just going to go ahead and type it in. Once you're finished you can edit comments. So let's say you leave here and you want to go back in here and you want to fix some information. You do that by clicking, um, selecting the, the, the cell that you want to work in, right click that cell and select edit comment. To resize the comment box, you're going to click and hold a circle that is on the corner or the edge and you're going to drag and release once that it the uh, text box or the comment box is the size that you want it. You can also change the color of your comment box. I would recommend that you make sure that you stay within some common and consistent colors. I would recommend that you use the colors of your university. To change the format of the colors, you, you click into the shade, open in, in the edit comment box again. So open the edit comments right click the shaded area around the comment, select format comment, and then select the colors and the lines tab. Adjust the colors and lines that best suits your project. Uh, you may have to do some selections over again until you get a good color. Next you're going to want to add hyperlinks to the cells. You're going to want to number your points of interests. Over on the right hand side you'll have number points of interests. Um, let's say that you're going to work with dormitories. So you're going to identify where all the dormitories are and you're going to number all the dormitories one. It doesn't have to be dormitories, it can be anything. Uh, or let's do class areas. Um, so go ahead and, and mark all those spaces where, where the dormitory is in, in this example um, or um, class areas. You'll need to select 
the whole area and adjust the color again so that it is visible. This might take a couple of trial uh, tries to, to get the right color. Uh, you're going to want to bold it as well. Don't change the font size because that will change the row height. Um, once you have labeled where these points are, you are going to right click the cell that has the number in it, select hyperlink, select existing file or web page, and then you are going to paste the URL, which is control V, into the address bar at the bottom of the box. You're going to get that URL by opening up a website and then co copying it off of the address out of the address bar. Once you're finished, check to make sure the hyperlink works. If it does, you're golden. If not, you'll try it again. Now, over in column A, you're going to want to add just some different links that are relevant to the website uh, or to the university, such as like admissions, um, uh, housing, etc. So go ahead and enter in those relevant terms and then find links to those pages where a user can find information on those different elements um, that you identify in that column. The best way to find this information is just right from your university webpage where you will have relevant links. The university has already done a lot of the work for you. So just go ahead and, and, and run down through this the number of links that will uh, be relevant to the user in this category. I'm going to pause right here while I work through some of these. And then we will finish up with uh, protecting your worksheet and saving it. As you can see, if you've already found all your web pages, adding the hyperlinks can go really quick. Uh, what's going to take the most amount of time is researching the interesting elements and adding them into the comments. So you're going to go ahead and continue through this process, adding your hyperlinks on the left and your uh, points of interests um, on the right, and then the labeling the map with the points of interest throughout. Now, once you're going to have users here looking at your site, you're not going to want them to be able to add contents or accidentally click on a number or erase something. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to protect it. To do that, you go to the pull-down menus, select Tools, Protection, Protect, and then Protect Workbook. It's going to have you add two passwords into these links or at this point. And then you want to go back in there again and protect the sheet. Once you have protected it, people will not be able to make changes to the uh, spreadsheet without knowing the password. When you're done, save your work. You're going to want to save it in two places. One, you're going to want to save it as a user sheet. That way, if it does get damaged somehow, you still have a backup one. Save the second one somewhere else as backup. That is how you make an Excel map that can be interactive and have hyperlinks and useful information all in one space.